Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the PWPOSH module, which is basically a power password pusher PowerShell module. Uh, so it's actually using the password pusher website to be able to let you to create secure string passwords and also publish them to the password pusher portal where you can actually share those links via email and they are good for a certain amount of days or certain amount of views all of which that you can actually control which is way more secure than sending those passwords in clear text over email so let's go ahead and let's take a look at how we can actually utilize that module uh, to create passwords and publish those uh, to the web so you can actually use them in scripts and share those urls via email or via a sftp um, repository or anything like that. So first we're going to have to install the module here. So we're just going to do install module and we're going to want to install the module with the name of P W P O S H. I like to make sure that the P's are capitalized and the S is capitalized. That is the way that it's, it's shown. It's not case sensitive, of course, um, in case you're wondering of why I did that. It's more just to follow the standard that they write it in. So once we install this, uh, it's going to prompt us if we want to install all of them. We're going to say yes, which is just yes to all, which is just the letter A. And that's going to install. It shouldn't take too, too long. This module isn't too big and it's already done. So now what we can actually do is let's go ahead and let's just generate a password here. Let me just shrink this out a little bit and um, let me just maybe zoom in here once more so you guys can actually see what's on the screen. And let's just go and generate a new password here. And here we have tons of different parameters. So we can actually specify the length of the password, the entropy of the password as well, which is also based on the length and the complexity. Um, that I usually don't set too, too much. If you guys want to know more about entropy, I can make a whole quick tip video on just password entropy. If you guys want to see that, let me know in the comment section down below. We can also do um, capitals. So here you can actually specify the number of capitals or uppercase letters you would want how many digits or numeric characters you would want, how many symbols you would want, how many lowercase um, letters you would want. Now there is some simple, uh, which I believe is just um, alphabet characters, pin, which is just numeric characters, um, exclude hard and exclude soft. Those will actually exclude those like harder to type characters and be a little bit more easier to read. So if you exclude hard, those are going to give you passwords that are easy to write by hand. And exclude soft should be ones that are going to be pretty easy to write um, using a computer or a screen reader. And they will usually exclude the characters that aren't accepted by databases. So by default, this should be a pretty good setting, especially if you're setting Active Directory passwords that might be integrated with some other applications and you don't necessarily know what kind of passwords that they use or anything like that, exclude soft could definitely be a very good one. I personally prefer the exclude cars, um, especially if you work in an environment and you know that um, certain characters, because there are certain symbols that are quite complicated to make for end users, I would definitely use the exclude cars and I usually exclude all of them other than the select few that I really, really like. Um, so we're going to go give an example of that uh, in this video as well. But first, let's just start with a very, very simple, let's set the length and let's set the length here to 12. By default, the length I believe is eight, um, but you can set that up to 64. Um, that is the support. Again, it would kind of depend on the application that you're setting this password for. You'd want to check what the maximum password length for that is. Now, what this is actually going to do when we actually click this, this is not going to publish a password on Password Pusher or in fact give you a really usable password. It's going to give you a secure string, which is definitely usable. This is what you can actually use to set the password 
if you use set ad user that password needs to be in a secure string as we've seen with other videos when we usually type out the password in powershell we need to convert that to a secure string so what's really cool is it actually creates the secure string for you so what i actually want to do here is let's create a variable called password and we're going to assign it to that new password and then what we want to do is we want to be able to actually go and see what this password is so let's just go ahead and let's do a publish dash password and that the only thing you really have to give it of course is the password here so we're going to give it our password variable and what i like to do is i like to give it views let's just give it one for now and days we're going to give it seven days so if we actually do this here if we run this code we're going to see that we get given a nice little URL here. And let's go ahead and let's copy that and let's paste that here. Now, this is actually going to open up a nice little screen here. And then the content is blurred out. Click below to reveal it. So we can actually click here and that is the password that got generated. So we can see here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 and 12 characters. So it generated the exact amount of characters that we want. And we can see that this secret link and all content will be deleted in six days or zero more views, whichever occurs first. And the user even has the option to delete the secret link now if they wanted to. But here's an example. If I go and refresh this page here, it is already expired. So that is the lovely thing about these password pushers. There's a lot of websites that do this similarly, but this is a module that uses the password pusher website here that you can use. You can also do um, URL redirection, but we're just going to focus on the passwords for now. So that is very, very handy. Now let's go ahead and let's take a look at just a different example here. So we're going to leave that there and let's go ahead and let's do a set AD user here and let me just go grab a get ad user and let's do a select spam account name now this isn't necessarily this is just to show you guys the different usability cases here um, so let's change the password for yt test three here. So, and then we can actually do a account. Um, it will actually be a set ad account password. And then the identity is going to be the yt three. And then the password, new password is going to be the password variable. And we want to make sure that it is a password reset that we are doing. So we can actually go ahead and let's just generate a new password so we can actually go and have the password itself that it is actually there. Uh, so once we actually copy this link here, And if we generate this password, we can copy this to the clipboard. And then if we go ahead and we open up our notepad here, and I believe that we should be able to uh, it might not be uh, WordPad might be the better option here. And let's just open the file location. And we should be able to run as different user. And let's go ahead. Let's paste that password in here. And then it is yt test three. And if we hit enter there, we will see that our application opens up as yt test three. So we are easily able to set Active Directory passwords using this. Now you can actually this is not limited to Active Directory passwords. I just wanted to show you guys how easy this is to actually do. So if you had a script that would set your Active Directory passwords, you could easily use this module, generate a password, and then 
send that via an email to the person's maybe personal email account saying, here's your account's been created, give them their username, and then a link to go see their password. Maybe give them a couple views and maybe a week to view it. And then this way, they'll get their password, they'll log in. And then in theory, you should always ask to change the password after the first login. They'll be prompted to change their password. And right away, that link in their email is already null and void because that password is no longer good. So that is the way that I would do that as well. But there are a lot of other things that you can do with this password pusher module. So let's go ahead and let's just keep looking at the different things. As I hinted before, is we can exclude certain characters. So what's really neat is in the actual documentation of the code, you can really see um, what symbols are being used. So if we go ahead and let's just go to the GitHub um, for the new password here we can actually see the list of symbols that gets used. So here we can actually copy paste this list of symbols and we can paste it in here. So let's just do exclude and we're gonna create a new string here. We're gonna paste all those in there. Now what I actually want to do is I actually wanna remove all the ones that might not be super easy for the end user to do. Uh, so first off, we're just going to go ahead and that should be that. And okay, yeah, the back tick is there. So what I would remove is I would definitely leave the double quote. I would remove the exclamation mark because that one's pretty easy to do. Um, the number sign is pretty easy. Dollar sign is pretty easy. Percent sign, pretty easy. The ampersand, pretty easy. Now, parentheses are pretty easy, but I like to avoid them in passwords. I like using the star. I like using the dashes. I like using the at symbol. I like using the hat. Now, this would be a very good example. Now, of course, you can always change this to your liking. And of course, depending on the applications that you're using. And then what you can do is you can have an exclude cars and have the exclude. Now, the exclude is actually a string. It is not an array. So if you try to create an array of all the strings that you want to exclude, that won't work. It just takes in a plain string. So let's go ahead and let's see how this looks now. So if we actually go ahead and generate this password here, and let's actually generate a really long password. We're going to generate a password of 25 characters here. There's our password. We can follow the link here. And there it is. There's our password. We have a star. We have an ampersand. We have a dollar sign. Very easy for the end user to type in. It's very long, very secure. Again, if they refresh, it is gone right away. Now there is one other cool feature for this. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna generate this with two views and we are just gonna store this as a URI. It's just gonna be a little bit easier for us. So if we go ahead and we generate another password and we look at our URI variable here, we can see that it is the actual site itself, which is nice. If we go to it, we can see our password has been generated again. Well, that is fine. What is actually very, very cool with this module is let's say you are working with a company that uses the password pusher and they send you a link of a password from password pusher and you want to put that into an Active Directory account. Maybe it is a contractor that you're working with and they want to specify the password that they want to use and they send you a password pusher link. What you can actually do is, what we're going to do is we're going to take this URL directly from our browser and we can do a get password URI and we can actually paste that URI in there. Now you can kill this link as well. Um, there are a couple other things that you can do, but the main purpose is really just to get that password. Now, the one thing about this is even when you still do the get password, 
it returns that in a secure string, which again is perfect because that's what you need to use on your Active Directory accounts and everything else like that. So I find that this module is very, very handy. I had a coworker show it to me the other day, and I think that this is fantastic, a very good tool to generate secure passwords and be able to send them securely as well, which both of those are kind of hard to do, and they are very, very well needed today with the world of hacking and cybersecurity. If you are still sending passwords via email, definitely look into this module or at least look into password pusher or those types of services where you can actually send a link that is only good for a certain amount of time or a certain amount of views. It will just very much limit the ability to get that password later on. If their email gets compromised, you don't have to worry about it because that email is already garbage. It'll have a link, but the days have passed or they've already looked at it and they don't have the context of the username, especially if you send the username in a separate email, which is even better. Or if you have an SFTP service that they can go and fetch a text file with the username, that could also be handy as well. That is it for this quick tip. If you guys have any commandlets or module that you guys would like me to take a look at, please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And also don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.